begin, okay? Yes. Okay, so in three, two. Good afternoon, my name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the May 10th, 2022 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at the discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting by efficiently, all votes items, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Rowe. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Ms. Hen. Thank you. Thank you. A quorum being present will we begin. Ms. Jameson, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Mana. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Ms. Sample. Present. Ms. Crew. Present. Mr. Spore. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Mr. Hartlove. Present. Ms. Pierce. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hi, this is Dr. Perandozzi, Executive Director of Special Education on as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perandozzi. Uh, hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Item two, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. Item number three, reports. Ms. Manna and Ms. Pierce, please proceed with a third party billing report. Ms. Um, Crew will do the third party billing report since she was the auditor who did this project. Thank you. Ahead, Thank you very much. Um, internal audit assisted uh, the office of third party billing with the annual self monitoring uh, of Medicaid. Sorry. Um, review of Medicaid. Reimbursements. Um, as part of it, we did not do this last year as um, with COVID it. Um, was just difficult and not as much was done. This year, we assisted third party building, building with a review. The final report issued by, to MSDE is attached to today's agenda on board docs. Internal audit selected a sample up for health related services and third party building completed the testing of this area. These results are included in the final report. Some of the items reviewed in this area are the initial parental consent and approval was signed. Adequate documentation of service coordination, including identification of the participants or the participants parent or guardian. Contact note uh, that describes services, um, progress and services delivered. Documentation of 10 day uh, meeting notice prior to formal meeting, as well as many other areas. Internal audit selected and tested samples of autism waiver and special transportation services. Some of these items that were reviewed for autism waiver were signed consent forms for autism waiver services. Um, the autism waiver service coordinator completed the initial and annual statewide training. Autism waiver participants received quarterly uh, direct observations as well as annual visits to their home. And monthly tracking logs showed that autism waiver participants received at least one monthly service. For transportation, we verified that uh, transportation services were identified in the uh, participants IEP and that the student was transported on the same date 
as an approved health related service. During our um, review for the self monitoring, we had four reportable findings all in the health related service section. Uh, parental consent for health related services were, was not obtained using the updated language. Inadequate documentation of case management services. The 10 day meeting notice for a formal service coordination meeting was not provided and the assessment was provided and billed, but the report did not include the signature of the provider. Additionally, MSDE completed their annual review around the same time we completed ours. There were 10 findings in their review. One of the uh, um, was related to autism waiver section, and they had nine in the health related service section. Some of the findings included service coordination billing must occur on the same date that service coordination services were provided when billing was actually dated um, of the service rather than the first day of the month. Service coordination progress reports documentation must include an IEP progress discussion and uh, health related services must be provided by appropriately licensed professional. Uh, we, as we say here, Ms. Pierce um, from third party billing is on the call. So if there's any questions for her or anything she would like to add, I turn it over at this time. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Rowe? No, not at the moment. Okay, and just to let everyone know, Ms. Hen has called in. Mr. Corns, do you see her present? No, sir, not as of yet. Okay. Uh, Let's move There's on. one thing Ms. I wanted to emphasize for the third yes, party billing. Um, for the third party billing report, I just wanted to make to emphasize that this year um, it was not a requirement to do this uh, review that we've done in the past, but we um, worked with uh, Ms. Pierce and determined that it was best for BCPS to do this self monitoring pro progress um, process. It was a recommended process for this year coming out of, of COVID, but we wanted to stay on top of it and do it as we have done in prior years. So we did do the same type of services from internal audit to, to assist third party billing with this project. Thank you. Ms. Hen is on. I, I know we've gone through this report, but Ms. Hen, do you have any questions about third party billing oh, not, report? Not right now. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Ms. Stevens, please proceed with the Board of Education non-salary expenditure follow-up review. Thank you very much. I will do that now. Uh, so last year we did a non-salary expenditure review of the Board of Education's uh, budget and their expenditures. Um, this year on April 22nd, we issued our follow-up report and I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the results that we came up with. So, we originally, in the original report, we had seven results that uh, we identified. For three of the results, so we're, we're looking to see if management has implemented their corrective actions to um, address the issues that are noted. So for three of the results, um, the corrective action plan was completely implemented and the issue was uh, completely resolved. Those uh, results um, were, uh, all payments were tested that were tested were approved by the board chair. Um, all of the procedures that were um, in place for travel expenses and reimbursements were followed, and we did not identify any legal fees that were paid outside of the scope of the legal services agreement. So those three issues from the prior audit were completed and implemented. We also had four results that were partially implemented. So for the first one, it was requisition procedures for purchases over $1,000 were not followed. Um, that original result had about four uh, pieces to it. Three of the four pieces were resolved. Um, the one piece that wasn't is we did continue to see the use of some confirming purchase orders um, for about 10% of the invoices that we looked at. So um, that is one thing that is still outstanding. Uh, for the result number two, um, that revolved around the use of a signature stamp on financial documents. 
Um, we did not find that happening in the follow up. Um, all of the documents were signed with a wet signature. However, um, there is still um, signature stamps floating around out there for um, board chairs, so we would just want to make sure that a standard operating procedure um, is uh, developed for the use of that signature stamp as to when it can be used and who it can be used by. Um, and the board office has uh, indicated that they expect that to be completed by summer of 2022. Uh, the next result was um, related to expenses being paid in the wrong fiscal year. So we did find one um, FY20 expense that was paid um, from the FY21 budget. It was paid late and therefore it was paid from the wrong budget. So that was for about $1,700. Uh, the final result was the board had overspent its FY19 non-salary operating budget. Um, that happened again in um, FY21 and started in FY22. However, um, in a on April 5th of this year, the board approved an additional $117,000 allocation um, to be moved over to the BOE budget. Um, 87,000 of that was for legal services and 30,000 was for conference fees. Um, and the main reason that the, that the board was overspending its budget was because there was not sufficient money or any money um, in the budget for legal services. So um, that is something that, that needed to be done that has been accomplished. So um, as of right now, there is a surplus balance um, in the board's budget um, as of the date of our report, which was April 22nd. So one other thing that we noticed that was continuing was the um, qualification that um, our Board of Education um, was not allowed or was not permitted to procure legal services without the permission of the county government. Um, there was action taken um, with the county government to get a um, an emergency contract in place and an RFP was put out and that RFP was um, settled and a three year contract with um, CKBBS was signed um, in January of this year. However, um, to kind of put that to rest, uh, Senate Bill 55 was passed by the Maryland General Assembly just this past April. So uh, that bill authorizes the BOE to retain their own counsel to um, re represent themselves in legal matters. So that bill will be um, enacted effective July 1st, and that should um, really take care of, of anything to do with this uh, additional matter. So um, our next steps, um, even though we we noted that there were still a few issues that are still in the process of being completed. We feel like the corrective action that was taken by the board and the senior executive administrative assistant have addressed the most significant risks that we had identified. Therefore, we will not be completing any additional follow up. Um, and finally, we'd like to thank Ms. Gover, who was wonderful at helping us, Ms. Ten and Mr. McMillian for their assistance during completion of our follow up audit. We very, very much appreciated it. So. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take those. Ms. Stevens, thank you very much. Ms. Rowe, do you have any questions? No, sir, thank you. Ms. Hen, do you have any questions? No, thank you. And I don't have any myself. We move on to item four, new business, FY 2022-23 work plan. Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with investigations report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I am going to share this document. OK. So what you see before you is the Office of Internal Audit Investigative Unit uh, FY 22, April 2022 report. Uh, this is on board docs uh, as well as part of the agenda. And this report of the investigative unit, uh, as I said, is as of April 30th. And so it's 10 months or five, six of the way through the fiscal year. And the report uh, will discuss activities during the month of April. So it will include cases that were open as of the end of last month, as well as any new cases that were received during this month. And so as we fast forward through uh, to table one, this actually shows us the cases that were received during the month uh, and we did receive nine. And as you can see here, six 
um, are cases that we will investigate and they were related to misuse of resources, payroll fraud or overtime abuse and procurement and purchasing practices. And then three, we're actually outside the purview of the hotline and we'll be able to close uh, with a memo to file. And so that's listed here. And so this is a breakdown of the nine cases. And then on table two, as I slide down here, Table two shows us that there were actually seven cases open as of the end of March. And then once we add in the nine that came in during April, we had 16 cases uh, that were open at some point during this month, during the month of April. And then what this table will tell us then is that um, 10 of those uh, of the 16 were investigations for the Office of Internal Audit. Two were actually sent to BCPS management to investigate and provide a response. And then four were outside of the purview of the hotline and closed with a memo to file. Now, the bottom part of this table <clears throat> actually shows us that as of April 30th, two of the 10 internal audit investigations have been closed. And so eight remain open uh, as of the end of the month. And then I'm sorry, and, and then for the management investigations, none were closed during the month, and so both remain open. And for those that uh, were outside the purview of the hotline, two of the four uh, have been closed with that memo to file. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, two of the four have been closed um, with that memo to file, and two remain open. Now, the remaining three tables uh, that are in this document, uh, table three documents all 10 of these cases uh, that are internal audit investigations. Table four will document both of the cases that were referred to BCPS management. And then table five documents all four of the cases that are um, outside the purview of the hotline and, and either have been or will be closed with um, memo to file. And so, uh, as, as always, these are out here uh, and, and attached into board docs so that you can review um, these case details uh, at, at your own leisure. And Mr. McMillian, I turn that back to you for any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. Ms. Hen, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Ms. Rowe, any questions? No, thank you. And I have no questions. Ms. Manna, please proceed with the risk assessment report. Okay, uh, Mr. Corns, we'll need the um, PowerPoint presentation. And Mr. McMillian, this is Ms. Barr. Ms. Manna and I are going to tag team this presentation this afternoon. So I want to wish everybody a, a good afternoon. And as we're finalizing our first ever, and I want to stress first ever entity wide risk assessment of the school system. I really would like to extend our sincere appreciation to all the board members who actually took the time to complete our risk assessment survey because we received some very insightful and thoughtful feedback. And we also want to extend our thanks to the superintendent, his cabinet and their teams for their exceptional level of cooperation that we received throughout the entire process. And as you know, Ms. Mana was the project leader um, for the risk assessment, and she's going to provide a brief overview of the functions that we assessed and interpretation of the risk scores. But before I turn it over to Ms. Manna, I just wanted to provide you with a brief definition of risk and explain the difference between risk assessment and risk management. Thank you. So basically, we just wanted to um, inform everybody that our defin definition of risk as we conducted the assessment, risk assessment of the organization, went back to the Institute of Internal Auditors. And basically, it's anything that is going to pre prevent BCPS from accomplishing the five strategic plan areas of the compass, which is learning, accountability, and results, safe and supportive environment, high-performing workforce and alignment of human capital, community engagement and partnerships, and operational excellence. Next slide, please. We thought it was also important to point out the difference between um, risk assessment and risk management. And if you notice, there's, there's a bridge there and there is a connection between the two. 
risk assessment is more of a continuous nature. And so we identify not only existing risk, but also emerging risks. And then risk based auditing is a methodology that will link internal audit to BCPS's overall risk management framework and will allow us to not only provide assurance related to the effectiveness of controls, but also that our risk management process to identify, evaluate, monitor, and report on risk are operating effectively. And everybody in the organization is a risk manager. And as risk managers, we all have a responsibility to identify just how much risk we are willing to accept, reduce, transfer, and avoid to ensure the success and effective completion of the compass. Next slide, please. So basically what we also wanted to point out and make sure that everybody was aware that all organizations, no matter how large, no matter how small, um, are, are vulnerable and have risk exposure. And you can see the various examples here related to the different types of industries. For example, NASA, uh, the health insurance industry, uh, uh, a company that would use ADP for payroll processing and the manufacturing uh, business. So, and you can see the risk example, the type of the key function, the risk example, and the type of risk response perhaps that these organizations would follow through with. So, um, as you see, you, you accept risk, some levels of risk with respect to the functions, um, or you put controls in place to reduce or mitigate the risk. Uh, or you transfer the risk out maybe to a, a third party contractor or insurance, for example, or you just want to totally avoid the risk and and not do something. So these I just wanted to, like I said, point out that all organizations have risks and have processes or should have processes in place to manage these risks. So now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Manis so that she can discuss the interpretation of our risk scores and summarize uh, information of the key functions and risk levels that we identified throughout our process. Next slide, please. Thank you, Ms. Barr. So currently we are looking at and reviewing our uh, outcomes from our, our risk assessment. We're looking at the risk score results and we're identifying and discussing all of the key functions that we identified for BCPS within the high, medium, and low risk levels. So here we just wanted to make sure we reviewed with you the interpretation of these results before we start looking into the results um, for our, uh, our next step in this process. Um, we wanted to reiterate like just because a function or an entity is considered a, um, at a, has a high risk score, it doesn't automatically mean that the function or the entity is being managed ineffectively or isn't function, functioning properly. It merely means that the services that the entity provides or the functions they're responsible for are high risk, as explained in some of the examples in the previous slide. However, areas identified with high risk may constitute where resources are needed, whether it's by management um, through management actions or through um, audit services by focusing resources in those areas. And this is the process we're currently working in for one for BCPS and doing this will help us to develop our work plan. Next slide, thank you. This slide shows the number of BCPS key functions that were identified through the risk assessment interviews and scorecards that were completed by management. We've separated the functions into three levels, a high risk level, medium risk level, and low risk level. We've identified at this time 458 key functions within BCPS, with 82 of them being at the high level, 181 in the medium, and 195 in the low level. So right now we are working through looking at these to determine which ones would be the best timing and appropriate uh, processes for us to include in our work plan. And at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Barr to talk about the next steps uh, and some more information for this next step in process. Thank you, Ms. Manna. So as you've heard me talk um, throughout the year at each of our meetings, our office is going to follow uh, the Red Book, which is the Institute of Internal Auditors Professional Practice Framework. 
So in accordance with the Red Book, we have communicated the projects that we intend to present in our FY23 to FY25 Office of Internal Audit Work Plan to the superintendent, and we plan to have a follow up meeting with him to discuss his feedback related to the projects that we identified with respect to the timing of the completion of the projects. So we also determined that we'll use 60% of our audit project hours, and we determined that we had about 7400 hours that we can allot to audit projects, and those are 60% of those hours are going to be used to address the high risk projects. 30% will be used to address medium risk projects and 10% will be allotted to address the low risk projects. In total, we identified 91 projects to be completed over the next three fiscal years, 20 high risk projects, 23 medium and 48 low. Our intent is to finalize and present our draft risk based audit plan to this committee at our next scheduled meeting on June 21. Uh, 2022. In addition to that, at that time, we also plan to submit our updated charters to the PRC liaison by that same date for the PRC committee's consideration to update our policies and incorporate the charters into policy. This concludes our presentation related to the risk assessment, and we are open to um, accepting committee member questions at this time. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Ms. Barr and Ms. Manna. Any questions, board members? Ms. Rowe? Yes, um, Ms. Barr, could you repeat that date that you're sending the audit charters to PRC? Yes, Ms. Rowe, no okay. later than June 21. So okay, we're hoping you. to have it all because we're trying to coordinate everything, um, align our plan with the Red Book, align the um, policies and the charters, and we did have to um, make some minor adjustments to the two charters, but they're in alignment with Red Book, but we're just going to run that through um, PRC so that it's incorporated into policy and those changes will be discussed at that time. OK, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Hen, any questions? Yes, thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, how are the percentages determined for the allotment of hours by risk levels? We base that on discussion, our research industry standards um, and felt that for the first time and, and keep in mind, this is the first time that we've done this, um, that that we felt that 60%, the 60, 30, 10% made the most sense. Of course, that, you know, if the committee feels differently, um, we appreciate and welcome their feedback, but again, it was based on research industry and discussion amongst the staff with respect to this being our first year. OK, thank you. OK, committee members, any other questions? Uh, Mr. McMillian, I have one more. Yes, please. Are there going to be any uh, work hours in the work plan for board requested projects as we've had in the past? It won't be called board requested hours, but it will be called um, unplanned projects or special projects. So yes, there will be an allotment for those types of projects. Keep in mind that the 7400 hours, Ms. Rowe, is just for um, these risk based audit projects. OK, thank you. You're welcome. OK, if there's no other questions, Ms. Barr, Ms. Manna, thank you very much. You're welcome. We're going to move on to item four announcements. The next meeting of the audit committee will be Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. Are there any further business? I'm going to switch gears and go to a different screen. So please bear with me. At this time, may I have a motion to go into closed session as permitted by the Open Meetings Act as found in the Annotated Code of Maryland General Provisions Article Section 3-305B1 to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction or any other personnel matters that affects one or more specific individuals. So move, Ro. Thank you, Ms. Ro. Is there thank you, Ms. Hen. 
So let me jot that down. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. So the motion carries. Mr. Corns, please end the live, live event session to go into closed session. At this time, I ask that all staff members